What's going on, Bird Gang? This is Darren Sproles here. I just want to thank you all for tuning in to Eagles Brawl, the Brawl Network. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and leave a five-star rating. Fly, Eagles, fly. This is a Brawl Network production. You're listening to the Eagles Brawl Podcast. E-A-T-L-E-S, Eagles! Here to take you on the road to victory. It's Connor Miles, Ed Cross, Johnny Page, and Tyler Steege. There. Welcome to another edition of the Eagles Brawl on the board on the Brawl Network. Sorry, uh, you are flying solo once again with myself uh, at Johnny Page. Um, currently, just myself sitting in my room. It's a Wednesday evening. I've just broken down the All 22. Um, I focused on the offense mainly this week, so there'll be a little bit more on that. I'm going to try and do exactly what I did two weeks ago, which is just sort of fly through my thoughts on a number of different Eagles players, a number of different things to do with scheme, and hopefully give you a little bit of insight that maybe you haven't heard elsewhere, because I'll try and avoid the sort of generic narrative that we've all been talking about. Sorry there wasn't one last week. There won't always be one, partly because of the time difference, partly because I could not watch that Eagles-Bengals game uh, more than once without going insane. So the Eagles did win, so it's fun to actually break down a win for the first time. Um, I'm going to start with the offence like uh, I guess I should, and I'm going to start with the quarterback position. I thought this was quite clearly Carson Wentz's best game. Um, he's clearly playing within himself, and I think anyone that expects it to get much better than this probably doesn't understand how the offence is set up right now. The offense isn't very uh, open. There's not a great deal going on. It's very simple. It's very basic. It's a lot of short throws, a lot of running the ball. It's a lot of screens, a lot of misdirection. And Wentz made some really good throws on the run. They got him on the move more. Um, And I think he was more accurate than he has been in recent weeks. And he made better decisions. Obviously, he had the beautiful throw down the sidelines, Travis Fulgham. But in reality, it was just a fine game from Carson Wentz. Um, I don't think many quarterbacks would do much better with his surrounding talent. I think he's doing just fine. Um, Obviously, he was better this week. I think decision-making was key. I think getting on the run is key as well. The interception wasn't great. We know his pocket awareness um, sometimes leaves things to be desired. But to an extent with Wentz, um, you have to accept it. You have to accept the bad with a good. Wentz is always going to be a player that stands in the pocket for a long period of time. Wentz is always going to be a player that's going to frustrate you. But then he will make these wild plays that we uh, retweet all over the place and go mad about. So for the most part, I'm sort of okay with those negative plays every so often, as long as he's still creating the big plays. Running game. Um, ru- I'm going to touch on the running game and sort of offensive line in one, I guess, one section, because the offensive line I thought was fine, but I think they've maybe got slightly too much credit. And this is not a negative argument. I really like Jordan Malata. I think for his first ever start, uh, it was really impressive. I think Nate Herbig's done very well as a rookie. However, I've seen some tweets on the timeline this week sort of praising Malata and saying he was excellent and outstanding and Pryor and Herbig, why haven't they been starting? And I think when you look at this offense, it's scaled back a lot and it's very basic. So yes, Malata is was okay in pass protection, but it's pretty simple stuff. It's short drops. He's being helped out by chip blocks um, from tight ends and running backs. He's not being asked to sort of block one-on-one against elite pass rushers on a seven-step drop. And it's partly the reason why I think the Eagles passing game is so limited at the moment is because they don't really trust that offensive lineman. They're keeping it short. They're keeping it three-step drops. They're keeping it quick outs, getting Wentz on the move. And it's obviously a lot easier to block when your quarterback is uh, thrown from different platforms because pass rushers can't attack the same spot. Um, so you sort of get the upper hand immediately. So while I think Mylata Herbig have done well, I didn't think Pry had a good game. I think just when you look at the running game, pass game as a whole, it is quite simplistic. I didn't actually think the running game was very good this week, which is a shame because Miles Sanders was there. And this is just a random take from me that could be completely wrong by the end of the year. But I think with Pryor and Herbig there in particular, Herbig is a huge individual and they can't do the same stuff in space that... um, you, uh, Brandon Brooks and Isaac Samardi could do. And I think what that means is you're seeing a little bit less outside zone. You're seeing a, li- seeing a little bit more man concepts. And I wonder if the Eagles are missing a sort of power back. I know we spoke about this a lot this year. I just wonder if Sanders is better in space on outside zone and he doesn't really have a great uh, sort of 
correlation yet with the um, pass protection. So the running game was okay. I think it still needs to be a lot better moving forward for this offense to have any chance. And yeah, I've already touched on the offensive line. Um, that's my thought on them. I know it might not be the most popular one. I think they're fine, but I think they're still holding back this offense. However, there's one set of group which I think has sort of got under the radar this week, personally, about still how much they're holding back the offense. And unfortunately, it's the receivers and the skill position in general. I mean, Richard Rogers played a lot this week, which sort of sums it up. I actually looked, I, I didn't chart every single throw, but I was. I went back and watched Wentz quite carefully. And I was looking at where he aimed his throws. And this offense just doesn't have an, a, a downfield game. It's seriously think and dunk. I mean, I looked at Zach Ertz's numbers, which were awful this week. And to be fair, though, he was the focus of the 49ers. Um, but only two of his attempts were past the line of scrimmage. And they went for about five yards, I think, in total. The other two completions were behind the line of scrimmage. Greg Ward was the same. Greg Ward uh, went to try to get a downfield to him a few times. I'm talking when I say downfield, I mean 10 yards plus, roughly. And he didn't have much success. Most of his success came within 10 yards of a line of scrimmage on crossing routes. Uh, Richard Rogers was identical. All of his stuff came within the first 10 yards. John Hightower was the same. He didn't get anything going downfield this game. The only one that actually had the downfield play was Travis Folger. And that was literally the only time I could see Wentz, except for I think one attempt earlier on, try and go down the field. And it was a hell of a throw and a great catch by Fulgham. Um, it was one of those where Fulgham didn't really get open. It was an example of the quarterback throwing open the wide receiver. However, what Fulgham did do was he fought through press coverage. He also made sure he didn't get pushed out of bounds. Um, he managed to stay on track. And then obviously, he made a really nice reception over his shoulder. Um However, I know it's not particularly exciting to talk about. We talk about it all the time. But for what the Eagles' skill position is right now, I just don't think they can do a lot else schematically. You're seeing a lot of slant. You're seeing a lot of mesh and crossing routes. You're seeing a lot of screens. You're seeing a lot of misdirection went on the move. You're seeing a very basic offense. And I worry that the Steelers will be a little bit too much for the Eagles to handle um, just because the Eagles receivers are not good enough. And I wanted to go and talk about this a little bit as well. Um, what we've seen a lot of on Eagles Twitter recently is um, some very good people on Twitter that I'm not calling out individually, but a lot of sort of videos of High Tower running open, videos of Greg Ward getting open. And I think as Eagles fans, <laughs> we've become so used to wide receivers who don't get open versus man coverage so sort of anyone getting any semblance of separation means we think they're great and I think it is just worth remembering sort of wide receivers should win one-on-one -on -one matchups a lot more than they lose in NFL the rules are geared around them press coverage is hard these days um, you can use motions you can get off coverage it, for the Eagles we get happy if we see one player get open a play because most of the time they're just covered. And other teams have guys running wide open consistently. I think we need to sort of have a few higher expectations. And I like Greg Ward. I think he's a fine player, but he's a fine player. And when he's your number one receiving target, you're getting like six, seven, eight targets a game, then your passing game has serious problems. Um, the other thing is on that is whenever we look at players getting wide open, I think there was an example when I remember, I think it was Deontay Burnett and not Hightower this week. There's an example of Burnett sort of screaming down the right-hand side of the field. He looks wide open. And if you pause the screen, you'd say, what are you doing, Wentz? Why have you not thrown it? And it's really important to remember quarterback progressions. Uh, if that's a backside read and Wentz has got his front side read open, he's not going backside. That's not the way it works. So when we see these guys sort of streaking downfield, um, it doesn't always mean that Wentz has missed them. You need to understand the design of the play. Uh, and obviously that's impossible for us to do as fans completely. However, if you understand the concepts, uh, you've learned how the concepts are run, you can make a pretty well-educated guess on who he should be going uh, to with the football. But that's my biggest takeaway from the offense, to be honest. I think Wentz played well. I think Sanders still looks good. I just don't think there's enough talent for this offense to really do a lot better than they did. And I don't know if that's a negative take. I mean, I guess it is, but it's not. I don't really blame anyone for this. Without Rager, without Deshaun Jackson, without Alshon Jeffery, without Dallas Goddard, without Jason Peters and the rest of the offensive line they're missing, they're just very limited in what they do. And I think our standards have dropped a lot. Wentz played a fine game and I see people saying he's back. Uh, the offensive line was fine and people were suddenly really praising sort of Herbig and Pryor and my last up. But in reality, the offense is condensed as a whole. It's, it's a pretty simple offense that they're running at the moment. And it's to do with the fact that they're not good enough, essentially, at key positions. Um, so it's not 
a criticism of the individuals, really. But I think I'm, John Hightower had the most snaps of any receiver this game, for example, and that's just not where you want an offense to be uh, in general. He's a rookie who was a late round pick for a reason, and he's suddenly uh, taking more snaps than anyone else. So in, reality, in overall, I say the offense was a good game. Um, they did what they could, essentially, but I think they're limited in what they are able to do simply because they're just not talented enough. And I think Rager and Deshaun coming back eventually will obviously help that. So onto the defense. Defense was quite fun to watch this week. I know I focus mainly on the offense. Uh, firstly, it's defensive line. And they had a heck of a game, which was good to see um, a really, really good game. I have no idea what happened to Gerard Avery. Absolutely none, but he was incredibly good and I really hope he gets some more snaps um Derek Barnett who I've been very critical of in the past he played more than Josh Sweat I believe from watching the film and he um justified it he played well he had a few good rushes against um Trent Williams which was good to see um he got a fair few hurries and that's good because that was a difficult task um and Derek Barnett showed he can play still uh, I think you got the usual play from around the ground that you expect and you got the usual play from Elite Jackson that we've come to see um Cox is still getting double teamed a lot which is fine and again that's a good point on Gerard Avery and it's not critical of him but when I break down the all 22 you've got to look at context so you can look at Ger- uh, Gerard Avery getting more Precious than Cox and say, oh, why is he playing better? Well, in reality, Cox is double team. Cox is the focus every player. One reason why Avery got pressure was he was single, basically one on one every play. And we'll see if that continues if he plays that well. But overall, it was really good from the defensive line. I thought they played a very tough offense well, even though they were helped out by the quarterback position a lot. Linebackers, on the other hand, I will point out that this is an incredibly hard. Uh, offense to go against their misdirection and the way Kyle Shanahan calls plays the way he structures his plays so he shows you the same look he showed you earlier on but with a different motion and with a different play call um, is very very clever with that said they struggled I thought Alex Singleton came in and played well at the end however again he played less than 20 snaps so when we're evaluating when we're evaluating these guys we've got to be very careful Um, again TJ Edwards didn't play a lot because he went off injured when he did play. You saw TJ Edwards do what TJ Edwards does, which is very good against the run, very bad in coverage. Um, you saw the full-scale game of Nate Gary in this one. He played a lot of snaps, so you expect to see it all. Um, you saw some very bad uh, pass coverage. You saw some very bad run defense. You saw missed tackles. You saw a lot of pass given up. However, uh, you also saw some splash plays. You did see him make a few key stops. There was times when he was in the throwing lane um, and he blitzed occasionally well at times. And I think he don't think he led the team with tackles. I think, but I think he was second on team. So I'm never as down as Nate Gary as some. I know he's not good enough. It's not his fault. He shouldn't be playing every snap. This is the way we are uh, on defense. So I can't be too critical of him. Linebacker is a problem, but it was a very, very difficult assignment for them. Secondary, two players stood out to me. Um, last thing we'll touch on because I don't do special teams is Slay's just a star. I don't really know what to say else about Darius Slay. He's just very good. You can see it on film. His coverage is excellent. His tackling has been good, actually. Um, so you can't complain at all. Marcus Epps had a bounce back performance. I thought he played well. But the big name I wanted to mention, and Connor Miles will love this because he's been going on about him all offseason, was Rodney McLeod. I thought Rodney McLeod played a very, very good game, in particular uh, in the box. I thought he came downhill incredibly fast. He was very aggressive. He led the team in tackles. Um, I think he also um, led the team in stops. And it was a very different role for him. We didn't see him as a, just simply as a deep centre field. The Eagles rotated him quite a lot. And he played that role really well which is interesting. It makes you wonder what could happen if they go and get a future uh, safety who can play deep uh, centre field more and you can get McLeod in the box a little bit more because he was very aggressive. He was flying around the football and and it was really good to see. Also, shout out to Jalen Mills. Didn't give up a big play. Um, Didn't give up many plays at all, really. You'd have sort of forgotten he was out there because he was very, very sound in coverage. And it's not easy to spend the whole off-season training at safety and then being asked to go to quarterback. So I think he played every single snap on defense, along with Darius Slay. So I think credit where credit is due to Jalen Mills. I know he's not everyone's favorite player, but he went outside against a tough offense and played well. Um, the other cornerbacks I thought were fine as well. It was a difficult matchup. Um, we saw LeBlanc and Roby Coleman sort of split uh, time. We saw more sort of packages with LeBlanc on the field. I think that's good. I think anytime you can get him on the field, that's fine. Uh, Kayvon Wallace had a bit of a nightmare, in my opinion. However... He was covering George Kittle a lot. 
and he was playing against an extremely difficult offense to deal with. So again, this is where we have to look at context. Um, do I blame him for that performance? No, he's a, he's a full frame rookie starting his first or playing his first ever game, and he's covering against guys like George Kittle which is very uh, difficult to deal with. Overall, though, I think the defence played a pretty professional game. I think we saw um, pretty much what we expected, I think, going into the game. The linebacker struggle, the defensive line was very good. Uh, the secondary held their own against a good uh, 49ers team. I think if their quarterback played better, we might have been in a little bit of trouble. Um, just one other thing I want to touch on before we go, because I realised, looking at my notes, I didn't mention this. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the Eagles' lack of explosive play primarily because being because they play a lot of one-two personnel and I've always said that's not true the reason why they have a lack of explosive plays is because they don't have explosive players well this week because of Dallas got it being out I think they played 12 personnel about 25% roughly when I was watching it I didn't try it as much higher and there was still a significant lack of explosive plays so I'll leave you on that note that explosive players create explosive plays and if the Eagles want to take their offense to the next level they're going to have to get some of their explosive uh, plays back also I didn't do this last time but I thought I'd uh, add something a little bit different just to end it on a high uh, I'll give my game sort of game ball on offense and game ball on defense um, and I think on offense it may be a boring one to give it to, but I think I'm going to have to give it to Mr. Travis Fulgham just because he barely ever played before, played a very limited amount of snaps, but he made the big play that really, I think, won the Eagles the game. And on defence, um, I'm going to give it to Rodney McLeod for the exact reasons that I outlined earlier. I just thought it was a very, very impressive game on McLeod, and he actually did things that I haven't seen him do for a while. So hopefully he's starting to feel a little bit healthier after his injuries in previous years. And if you can carry that on, I think uh, we have a, a pretty good secondary, um, especially, to be honest, I think there's an argument if Mills plays like that every week, that he's more of a natural fit for the outside quarterback position than Maddox anyway. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when Maddox comes back. Anyway, that's a good 16 minutes, I believe, talking about the All-22 by myself. Uh, please let me know if you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any other ideas for the podcast. I'm always open to ideas on this. Um, it's sort of a chance for me to just ramble and get off some things off my chest. I'll still be joining Connor and Tyler, etc., on other days. But if there's anything in particular, any questions you have about the All-22 or anything you want me to go into, I'm just trying to keep this very brief and give you a different overview and maybe give you some different points to think about. So anyway, you have been listening to Eagles Brawl on the Brawl Network. Take care and I will hopefully speak to you next week.